Hi everyone, this is Coach D, and today we're going to be talking about the rules. Now, hey, I'm going to try my best to not put you to sleep in the next, you know, three hours. Nah, but it's going to be all right. Hey, this is very important for you to know because when you're out there on the field, sometimes there's uh, discrepancies. So, if you don't know every single rule at the very beginning, it's okay. Usually it takes you about one or two games if you've never coached before to kind of get these rules down. But over time, I would go through the rule book, read it through, and make sure you understand each and every rule. So, with that being said, let's dive in. So, first of all, I, I hope you know that this is a five-on-five -five league. So what that means is you're probably going to have anywhere from eight to ten kids on your team. Now, I've been coaching for a long time, and there's some times where five of my kids on my 10 person, they're gone. I don't know where they are. They went to Orlando, one guy is sick, another guy just, you know, doesn't care anymore, whatever it is, sometimes you're gonna have only five kids out there. That means they're playing the entire game and they're four years old. So, it's gonna happen, uh, but that's okay. That's where we come in and we motivate them. So you got a five on five deal, we have three different leagues here. First, you have the Lombardi. Those are those pre-K, kindergartners, first graders. Then you have your Shula League. I like these guys because they start to pass. You can start to get some plays going, and they really understand the game. So that's your second and third. And then if you're doing anything over fourth grade, that's your Madden League. And we've got a few different rules on that, and we'll cover that in just a little bit. Now, the whole thing is, this is a rec league. I know you're competitive. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Maybe you're doing this because your wife said, hey, I signed you up. Sign me up for what? Football. What? I, what? Why? Well, I want you guys to hang out. What are you talking? Whether you know what you're doing or not, it's okay. Bottom line is, it's a rec league. There's no playoffs. If you win, if you lose, it's all right. What we're doing is we're teaching life skills. We're teaching the fundamentals of the game. So I need you to understand that from the get-go. Another thing is, after you've been coaching for a, a little while, you're going to start to see that you're going to want to keep your team together. So they've created this awesome buddy request. Now let's move on to attire. Look, you're going to have some really um, smart kids who say, do I have to wear my mouth guard all the time? Uh, yeah, yes you do. You mean just in practice? I mean, we just talk about practice. What are you talking about? No, you have to wear your mouth guard at all times if you're on the field. Another thing is, make sure they go and they get uh, pocketless pants and shorts. Now, we're going to talk in a, in a little bit about having duct tape with you. If they have pockets, make sure they are duct taped down. The reason I want to do that is, I want to make sure that if a kid is reaching for a flag and they get caught in pockets, that's, that's no good. You do not want that, that could cause an injury. So make sure they have pocketless shorts, pocketless pants, and also duct tape it if they do have it. We're not gonna have any kind of metal jewelry. I mean, I can't see a four-year-old bling blinging, but you never know. You just don't know. So uh, put it on the sideline. And then cleats, you just want normal cleats. You don't need these metal types. So just make sure that that is, is taken care of. Now let's talk about you as a coach. You wanna make sure that you're always wearing your shirt. And because there's only three coaches allowed, whoever's the coach, those are the only ones that are allowed on the field during the game. So make sure you're always wearing your shirt. Now this one is important. I like to be involved on the field, but as a coach, you have to be on the sideline during the game. So you have a 45 second uh, huddle, right? You, I, you have to be out there telling the plays, giving them some coaching, but then I have to be off once that ball is hiked. That is both on defense and on offense. So usually I'll stand behind the offense and then I'll get off the field, then I can run back on, but make sure you're always off. The only exception is for the Lombardi, for my kindergartners, my pre-K, my first graders, I can stay out there on offense. A lot of times what I have to do is I literally have to pick them up and put them in position because I've got some kid who's like this. What, why, where, what are you doing? 
I'll, I'll literally say, what are you doing? He'd be like, I have no idea, I'm four. Ooh, is that a ladybug? You're killing me. So, you're allowed to be on the field for Lombardi, just on offense, all right? So, let's move on. Another great rule, um, whenever we're going to be on the field, you wanna give equal participation. And this starts from the very beginning. At the beginning of the, the whole entire game, you're gonna be doing uh, a coin toss. And you're gonna have two captains. Now look, I love my son. I want him to be captain every single week. Please don't be that guy. Don't be that guy where your daughter's every single time the captain, all right? So have fun with it. Um, have them play a game to figure out who can do uh, more push-ups, you know, or, or whatever it is, but always rotate and have two captains out there. When you get out there, you're gonna have an away team and a home team. Home team's gonna be wearing that dark jersey. The away team is going to be calling the coin toss. Hey, Brian, what do you want, heads or tails? Cool, boom. And then whoever wins, right, doesn't matter, whatever, the other team is going to decide whether they want to receive or play defense first, right? I always defer, that's just me. And then whoever is going to get the ball in the first half is obviously going to be on defense in the second and vice versa. Now here's one that I need you to really focus in. So let's get serious for a second. Just recently, they introduced this fourth down, you can go for it rule. So let's make this very clear. If I'm playing on a one-way field, what that means is I'm starting at the 40 and I'm going all the way to the end zone, right? It's just one way, right? There's not the whole entire field. I have the opportunity for three downs to get a first down, okay? That's just to get to the first down, that's halfway through. So now I'm on, let's say, the 20. Then I have, if I don't get it after three downs, now I can go for it on fourth down to get that first down. I have the option to either go for it or turn it over. Now here's where it matters, coach. If I go for it on fourth down, and let's say I am three yards away from that first down, if I don't get it on the fourth down, the ball is turned over to the other team right there, three yards away from midfield. They take possession, and all they need is three yards to get that first down, and then they have another three plays to get in the end zone. That is tough. So I need you to spend a, a, a minute to really understand that. So let's recap that. If I'm going a one-way field, I have three downs to get a first down, and then I'm given the option to go for it or turn it over on fourth down. If I turn it over, Okay, it goes back to the 40, the other team is all the way back. If I try to go for it and I don't get it, they get the ball on the spot. On the spot and all they need is one, one little play, one yard and they get the first down. You'll have somebody screaming. I guarantee you there's gonna be a coach who has no idea and he's like, what? I thought they'd be there. So please take a moment to understand this one, all right? Now, once I get a first down, I have three downs to get in the end zone. There is no fourth try to get in that end zone once I've got the first down, all right? Hopefully you understand that. If you have any questions, obviously we're here, but that is in the rule book. Take a minute, coach, to look that up. Let's keep going. All right, so we have two different options. Most of the time, you're gonna be playing on a one-way field. What that means is you have a, from the 40 to the end zone. That's it. If there's an interception, it goes back to the 40. There's no pick sixes in a one-way field. Man, I've seen some kids try to do the high step, you know, the Dion, whatever. Um, dude, just put the ball down, it doesn't matter. So if you intercept, it just goes back to the 40. If you turn it over, let's say you're on the five yard line, you've tried three times to get in the end zone, you don't get it, it goes back to the 40. So this is on a one way field, all right? Most of you are going to be doing that. You'll see in your rule book, you'll see it's cut up, so remember that. Now, in tournaments, 
Most of the time you're going to see tournaments, you're going to see uh, some fields out there where you have a two-way field. Now the two-way field is a full, like, you're going basically about 60 yards uh, of full play. But basically you're starting from the five-yard line and you're going all the way to the end zone. So same type of rules where if you turn it over on downs, that is going back to the five-yard line. So coach, take a minute to just review that so you fully understand. Now, let's just get into some general offense. All right, let's keep this simple. Whether you've done this a thousand times, this is like your seventh season, or you're just starting and you have no idea what's going on. See, my wife signed me up, didn't tell me. Hey, just wanted to let you know you have a coach's meeting tonight. Coach's meeting for what? What am I doing? Oh, okay. And now, hey, I'm loving it. It's great. So, let's talk about it. First of all, there's no intentional contact. Whether you're on offense or defense, just make sure you are not trying to hit people. Okay, this is not tackle. You're not trying to get in the way of people. It's just not, not cool. Another one that you may not know is you cannot block in this league. What they don't want is if I have a sideline, right, and I'm running down the sideline with the ball and I've got a buddy that's just running along with me, whether he's trying or not, he's kind of blocking, right? So I've seen that. So just make sure that you're, you're conscious of it. This is a non-blocking, non-contact leap. Now, like I said earlier, there's a 45 second huddle. And you'll see, some refs are very legalistic on this. Hey, coach, you have five more seconds. Coach, I need you out of there. Just make sure you know your plays, whether you're gonna be using a, a whiteboard or you're gonna be using a, a, you know plays on your wristband, whatever it is, just make sure that that's, that's taken care of. Now, look, I love to get athletic and you'll see some kids, <laughs> they love to spin, they love to do some moves, they love to juke, whatever but make sure that they are not trying to dive for extra yardage. You don't need people like diving into the end zone. That is illegal, it's a penalty. Now, if you are in, I would say Lombardi, you're probably not gonna be doing a lot of passing. It's crazy that a four-year-old can't catch a football. It's weird, you know, I, I've yelled at my daughter about 50,000 times where she puts her hands up and the ball smacks her right in the face and I'm like, what happened? I told you to diamond. Why didn't you diamond? Uh, no. Let's get serious. Hey, if I'm in a second, third grade league, they're gonna start to catch. They're gonna start to pass. So let's talk about some passing. And if you're in Madden, you're doing about 80% passing. You're up and down the field crushing them, baby. So let's make sure we know this. There are no quarterback sneaks. Just don't, don't do it. You just don't need it. So the quarterback has seven seconds, all right? You're gonna see the, the ref start to do this. The ref is gonna start to do one of these. He's gonna count down seven seconds. It is a dead ball after seven seconds. So one thing I recommend for you to do is work with your quarterbacks on making a quick decision. Get that, I would say three to five seconds is safe so that they're making a decision. But after seven seconds, the ball is dead, the play is over, so don't do it. That's your pass clock. Once they've handed it off, the pass clock is over, okay? Another thing is, look, we all like to create our own little plays, right? And sometimes we like to do a no-look pass over here. Hey man, I got my no-look pass. If it doesn't pass the line of scrimmage and is a forward pass, it doesn't count. I mean, that's an awesome play, but it just doesn't count. So it's over. So make sure it goes across the line of scrimmage and right forward progress. Now, when I want to throw the ball, I can throw it to any player on my team. That means the center. This guy right here, he can catch the ball. Now, that's awesome because I can, I can do some creative plays where everybody's going deep. This guy's just kind of hanging around, and then all of a sudden, boom. So have fun with that. Another good one to know is when I'm handing off, make sure it's behind the line of scrimmage. There are no pitches, right? It has to be a direct handoff and it has to be behind the line of scrimmage. You can do it as many times as you want. You can do reverse, right? You can do a fake reverse. That's okay. If you wanted to hand it back to, to, 
but there has to be a direct transfer of the ball from one person to the, to the next. Okay? So you can do that as many times as you want as long as it's behind the line of scrimmage. Cool? How you guys doing? This is rules, baby. This is like, <sighs> if you need a snack, now's a good time to like go grab it. Maybe grab a Red Bull. I'm not even halfway done. Yeah, that's happening. <laughs> Did you just walk out? Why'd you walk out, man? Come back. Nah, it's all good. All right, here we go. Let's get back into it. Defense. Let's talk defense. Defense wins championships, baby. I know it's a rec league, but you know, you get kind of excited. So look, don't try to do anything complicated on defense. Um, I've, I, so my brother-in-law, he's a new coach and he's like, man, I gotta study the defense, man. I gotta, I gotta study like, you know, zone one, zone two. I gotta get like man to man. I gotta, uh, whoa, man, chill out. It's a rec league and the kids are five, but just have corners, have two safeties and a linebacker in the middle. I mean, that's it. And here's a couple good rules. They have to be one yard off the line of scrimmage, no matter which league you're playing in. One yard off. Everyone except for Madden. That means if they're under fourth grade, they cannot rush or pass the line of scrimmage on defense until the ball is handed off. Only exception is on the Madden division. What I like to do is tell my team to watch the ball because they're going to be doing fakes. They're going to be doing all these fancy things in the back. But all I'm looking for for my team to be able to rush in is for a ball to be handed off because once the ball is handed off, I can rush in. All right, let's talk about Madden. All right, this is anybody who is fourth all the way up. Okay, this is the Madden. Uh, a division and, and the rules change. Number one, there are no run zones. If I am five yards before midfield, so midfield is going to be my first down. If I am within five yards of that first down marker, I cannot run the ball. Nope, you gotta pass it. That's a no run zone. Also, within five yards of the end zone, same thing. So those are no run zones. I cannot run it, I have to pass. Another good one is you can actually rush in Madden. It's so exciting. So here's the rule. You have to be, your player has to be seven yards behind the line of scrimmage and that's where they are going to start their rush. The second the ball is hiked, they can rush in. Okay, it's different than the other leagues. Now, what's great is that the ref is gonna be on the sideline, he's gonna drop what's called a puck and he'll just put it down and give you that seven yard marker. So, you could rush the whole team. I don't care. You could rush one person, two people, it doesn't matter, that's up to you. But they have to be behind the line of scrimmage and they go immediately. The ball does not have to be handed off, okay? Now, somebody asked me the other day, coach, when somebody's rushing in, can the quarterback run? No, they have to pass it or hand it off. That doesn't give them the, the right to just take off like Cam. All right, so that is rushing the quarterback in the Madden League. This is only for Madden, no one else. Let's keep going, right? <laughs> All right, so I've scored a touchdown. I can't believe it. It's our first one. Oh my, what am I doing? You're gonna actually like it. <laughs> You're gonna be like, what's happening? So the ref will say, "All right, coach, one or two. So if I go for one, I start on the five, right? And if I go for two, I start on the 12. Very simple. There's not too many rules, but if I start on the five, it's a no run zone, so I, I think you get it. But that will give you one point, all right? Or it'll give you two points. All right, now let's get into mercy precautions. Whew, the mercy rule. Again, this is a uh, make you feel good league. This is a coach you up, build you up with the fundamentals, with the, the life skills, 
the leadership, sportsmanship, all that good stuff is what we want to promote. What we don't want to promote is I just crushed you. I just beat you 35-0. So here's how it works. If you are crushing a team, right, you've got your best running back running all over them all day long, can you please pull back? What we're trying to do here as a league is not make people feel terrible when they get crushed 35 to zero. So here's what we've got. At 28 to zero, we're gonna start doing some things on the defense. First possession on the defense for the other players, you're basically gonna take one of your defenders off the field. If you don't score, if they don't score, nothing happens. Then on the next possession, when you get the ball, now they get an additional defender. So now you're five to six. We want to make sure you don't get to that 35. All right, take a minute to understand this. And again, we're going to talk more about rotating, making sure everybody gets fair play so that again, this is an uplifting experience for everyone. There will be times where a ref doesn't show up. It happens. With so many leagues, with so many things are going to happen. I have literally had to be the ref for one of our games. Here's how it works. For time, just in case, we have two 24-minute halves. And you have a two-minute uh, halftime. That's as simple as that. Now, what I like to do with my halftime is I like to go around and say, all right, let's talk about one thing that you have seen out there that your players on your team are doing well. Oh man, uh, Bob made a, a, a sweet flag. Oh man, Eric's been throwing all over the field. Oh, that was an awesome run by Cameron. Oh my God, I want to uplift them. We all like timeouts. Everybody likes a little timeout. So here's how it works. You have one 60 second timeout per half. They don't roll over, all right? So at the end of the game, things change a little bit and I wanna be very clear about this. So, the clock will automatically stop at the one minute warning of the second half at the end of the game. I've got one minute left. If the score is within an eight point differential. During this period, the clock will also stop to set the pucks. Now again, a puck is, I have just thrown it 20 yards. My ref is like huffing to get it down. No, 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 no. When he picks up the puck, which is the line of scrimmage, that's what they use, and he takes it all the way 20 yards, don't worry. <laughs> Some people are freaking out. The clock has stopped. All right, so whether it's completion, once that flag is pulled, he's gonna take it all the way up, the clock has stopped, all right? And again, this is within an eight point differential. If there's an incompletion, an extra point, a first down, out of bounds, all of that happens within the last minute. Coach, I would take a few minutes to make sure you understand this because some refs may or may not know it, and they're gonna ask you, does, does this clock stop on this? Yes, it does. Why? Because of the eight point differential. So make sure you got that. So here are some nice tips for you. Whether you've been doing this forever or you're just starting, this is a rec league. So keep your play calling simple, all right? Whether you've started yesterday and you have no idea what your plays are going to be, the bottom line is let's keep it simple. Now, if you're in Lombardi, I would recommend you run often. And the reason is, is because they're four, they're five, they're six, they're, they're young, man. They can't catch at this age. So run all the time if you're in Lombardi. If you're in Shula, I would say let's go 60% run, 40% pass. This is a great tip. I wish I had that tip a long time ago. You want to start introducing your, your passing plays. One of the drills that I created, it's called passing routes. Get that going so that they understand just five routes. That's all they need. 
On the Madden side, let's take it up to 80% pass, 20% run. You want to be passing up and down the field. Now, to be honest, this is a short game, all right? Get your short game going. You don't need to be throwing it Hail Mary every single play. Get your curls going. Get your, your slants going. That's the best way to move down the field in school. On the defense, I've said this before, you don't need to be too complicated. I would recommend staying away from man to man and do a nice zone defense. Usually we like to have two corners, that's up on the defense a little bit. All right, then I have two safeties and a linebacker in the middle. If you wanna rush that linebacker, that's fine, but make sure your zones are covered. All right, here we go. Here are some team concept ideas. What I like to do is I like to collect my flags at the end of every game. Why do I do that? Well, hey, Bobby just left his flags. And the site director doesn't have flags. So now what? Exactly. So collect the flags. Everybody's got their name on it. Everybody's, you know, so you're good. And then you pass them out at the next one. Now, if somebody wants to practice, hey, I want to practice with my, my son this week, and I want them to have their flags. That's cool. All right, take them home. Just make sure you are responsible enough, all right? Communicate with them and make sure they get that so that they bring those flags. Have a system for rotating your players. One thing that we recommend is if I have 10 players, have a team one, team two, all right? At the very beginning of the game, I'm gonna say team one is on offense, team two, defense. At the half, they switch. That's it, okay? I'm not gonna have my best player, let's say, running the ball every single time, and I've got one guy on center that's always the center. And he's just always gonna be the center and never gets to touch the ball. Everybody should have an equal opportunity. So, here's, here's the last thing I'll say. You gotta make it fun. Number one, coach in the moment. Even on the field. Like we're talking about in the game, somebody misses the ball, okay? They missed the ball because they didn't do the diamond. You come up to them and you're like, dude, that was a nice try, nice try. But put your diamond up. How do we catch the ball? Make sure you do it, all right? If they miss the flag, because they keep going for the, for the bottom of the flag and you've taught them to go at the very top of it, you sit there and you coach them in the moment. Hey man, nice try on that flag. I love the, the effort, but what do we do? How do we get the flag? Where do we grab the flag? Show me, boom, and I'll do it right there. Not to embarrass them, I don't make it a big show. I just go right there because the best way to do it is to coach in the moment, so make sure you do that. Now, at the end of the game, I want you to have something exciting, right? What I like to do is get all the parents to do this, you know, and I have a nice little tunnel where the kids are running through. How awesome is that? You know, whether you win or lose, everybody's excited, and I get the other team to come out there. And one thing that I love to do is encourage the other team. If they're running up and down the field, I'm like, man, that was awesome. But wait, that's the other team. That's okay. That's my job, right? To build everybody up, because that's what it's all about. And at the very end of the season, I want you to have something awesome to say about every single player, whether it's most improved or, man, the energy that comes out of that person. So whatever it is, find something unique about each individual and tell them that. Share that with them, and you'll see. You'll get the reward. If you have any other questions, online resources, we've got them. You can go to the resources section. A couple things that I like to do when I first started is I'm kind of a techie. So there's, a, there's an app called Playmaker. And I went to the Playmaker HD app. Pretty cool. It's on the App Store or in the Google Play. And I just started messing around. And all it does is it says, okay, I've got five little players. I can do little routes. It's super simple. And within like five minutes, I had like 10 plays. We do have some sample drills and plays, that's fine. But I would just start going at it and just figuring it out on your own, all right? Now one thing that I'm excited about is to provide you with the video library.
All right, this is something I did personally for my team. This is actually why I'm here. So now we have a video library of drills for you. We'll have some sample plays, maybe some schedules, maybe some tips here and there, but it's all video based, so that's another resource. So if you have any questions or need anything, we're here to help. All right, coach, I know you can do it. Whether you've been crushing it for years or this is your first baby, you're gonna love it. All right, we hope you have a great season. And we'll see you next time. This is Coach D.